Welcome to the fifth season of Inside EKU Sports, and for good reason, doing it a little different this year. I'll be in the studio. All of our guests will join us via Zoom, and we begin with the head coach of the football team, Walt Wells. Walt, second game coming up in the state of West Virginia this Saturday against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. You played the thundering herd of Marshall to open the season, and in that loss, what did your team learn and as a staff and player by player? Well, I think as a staff, we learned, you know, what our players can and cannot do and what we think or what we think they can and cannot do and what was shown on Saturday. And uh, and so we know how to play to their strengths a little better than we, we did going into the game. Um, that being, you know, we, we saw some of the things that we thought they could do in scrimmages, but we learned more and more, you know, in that type of setting, what we can and cannot do. I think the players themselves learned that they have to, you know, you have, when you're playing up and you're playing FBS opponents and 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 you're playing football in general, that uh, you have to bring it when you come out on the field and you have to be ready to go and you cannot make little little mistakes that lead to big mistakes. And uh, we have to hone in on the little things. You know, it's a um, the little things are the things that make big things happen, and we got to let the game come to us. We don't have to do anything extraordinary to win that football game. All we have to do is go play fundamentally sound football play hard for 60 minutes and get it, give yourself a chance in the fourth quarter to win it. And I think we had some guys do some uncharacteristic things um, that, you know, I thought we were seeing during the game. Uh, and when we watched the film, you know, it, it's how it turned out. It seemed as though in the trenches – when they had the football or when EKU had the football, that Marshall just had the stronger team. So how do you overcome that when there's that that ability to control the trench, which we saw in game one? And West Virginia is going to be that same type of opponent because you're playing way up to a power five. Well, I think whenever you, you talk about, you know, D-line and O-line play, first you've got to – you know, when you watch the tape, it's not nearly as bad as you ever think it is. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, our D-line played probably the best of any position on our, our team. Uh, and I know it's hard to say because they were pushing the pile a little bit. But our linebackers in this 3-4 defense that we run has to be the guys that are in there making the tackles. And and we had a lot of misfits. We had a lot of linebackers getting uh, – moved out of their gaps and we have to play better at the inside linebacker position. Uh, Elijah Taylor uh, played really well, to be quite frankly. I mean, he, he, he got, he was in a battle with their tackles and he, and he got, you know, his, he got the best end of it as much as they got the best end of it. But, so I feel, and Shane Burks held up some in the middle. He did some good things for who he is. And then, uh, and Q Floyd did some good things out there. Uh, we had a lot of young guys coming in and playing, and I think they realized where they're at, that, that technique matters. Um, and, uh, and so we've got to do a better job of, uh, of holding our gap. But our linebackers have to fit and fit where they need to fit to make those runs not be four and five yards run, but be one and two yard runs. And uh, I think – uh, on, on defense, that's where we're at. But on, on uh, offense, you know, I, I was really pleased in some areas with our O-line and the fact that we blocked movement better than most people would anticipate. Uh, you know, obviously the fourth down is something that, you know, we would we would, would rethink on what we called and we would rethink on how we blocked it. And um, it would help give us some better situations. But, you know, a lot of times uh, when it comes back to guys doing characteristically on un, un, things that, aren't there, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to follow your blockers and you'll get three and four. You know, some people think a three-yard gain is not very pretty. Well, it's, it, it's three yards and we'll take that. And so uh, I'm by no means am I saying they play great, but but I'm, I think they play better than probably most would indicate after watching that game. West Virginia, the 15th most wins in college football history. And up front, they've got these guys called the Still Brothers. Uh, the right. And they are good. Darius, the nose tackle, and Dante, the defensive tackle, combined last year, they had 14 quarterback sacks. Uh, they're pretty stout right up front. They're really good players. Their dad was a great player for the Kansas City Chiefs, and uh, I recruited Dante when I was at Tennessee, so I know him uh, fairly well. And uh, I knew, you know, when you go to Huntington High, or not Huntington, when you go to Morgantown High and, and you're right there – and yeah, I knew it was going to be a battle, but uh, they're good players and, and they're active up front. And, and, you know, they've had a defensive coordinator change, uh, but 
uh, Jeff Castile's back, and they moved him up from a QC role to an on-the-field role, and then the two guys that were that their uh, coaches that were uh, probably going to be co-defense coordinators uh, are, you know, they're in, the, in uh, Vic Coning's kind of tree, so to speak. So we anticipate what they're going to do, but it'll be interesting to find out because that change happened this summer. Uh, so there's no really quote unquote film on who the coordinator is. So, uh, we're working through things to make sure that we're prepared for both fronts and, uh, and that we have an eye and we know where those two, uh, obviously the nose, we're going to know where he's at, but we know where Dante's lining up and make sure we have a plan for him. And a quick comment on offense before we go, uh, Jarrett Nagy will be the quarterback. He led them to two wins the last three years, uh, last three games last year after he took over for Austin Kendall. Uh, they need to run the ball better this year. They know that. They expect they will, and they're pretty deep at wide receiver. So offensively, I assume you expect a better West Virginia team on offense than you saw most of last year. Uh, well, most certainly, and they're in their second year. I mean, last year they were learning a totally new system that Neil brought in and a totally different system than what they're used to. And so they, you know, they had growing pains last year, like you do in most tr in transition periods. But uh, I think they will try to definitely establish the run against us. Um, and so we're, you know, we know that challenge is coming. If you can, if you can, you know, if you make us commit to the run so much, then they're going to be able to throw it over the top. And they got some really good young receivers that so we're going to have to do a great better, uh, much better job in coverage than we did obviously last week. And, and be prepared. But, you know, Greg, Greg um, our guys are, 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 they're embarrassed. Our coaches are embarrassed. We're all embarrassed. And we know that. And we're, we're going to work our tail off to get to where, you know, we go to Morgantown ready to play. All right. Thanks, uh, Walda. Against coaching against Neil Brown, a uh, con ex Kentucky player, a Danville native. So there's a little uh, bluegrass tie as we go to the Mountain State on Saturday. Well, Neil was a play high school player when I first came here, and uh, his dad, his dad was a longtime center coach that ran the uh, the high school clinic in the summer. So uh, great connections there to you, to Kentucky and and to the, the South Central area. All right, thanks, Walt. Walt Wells, the head coach of the EKU football team. The Colonels will be on national television for the second week in a row. You can catch the game at noon on FS1. We'll have the radio coverage at 100.7 FM. You can find our stream at ekusports.com and on the TuneIn app. Well, we roll along here on Inside EKU Sports. Check in on the volleyball program next. We'll see you back after this. At EKU, we believe education is the solution to challenging times. So we're keeping college within your reach. This year, we're freezing tuition, dining, and housing fees, increasing financial aid for incoming students, and you can apply for free. We call it the EKU Advantage. Earn your degree on campus, online, or both. It's your choice. To learn more, visit advantage.eku.edu. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk volleyball now with Jonna Bazzani. And Jonna, before I start with the team and the strange year that is 2020 and now 2021 in the future, I want to start with you personally. Congratulations. You get married right before Christmas, and now you're close to having your first child. So it's been quite a year for you. Yes, it has definitely been quite a year, um, but we are super excited and just ready to take on this next phase in my life, I guess. <laughs> your your uh, husband, Anthony, played baseball at EKU, mm -hmm. and so an EKU connection there. But uh, you didn't really know him when he was playing baseball at EKU, right? He had returned, you told me. Yes, yeah, so we didn't know each other. We met each other in grad school. Um, he was off in spring training, so he'd come back and get his master's. Um, so when I was a GA, we met. And so he's he's looking forward to it. Hopefully we have a little future colonel on our hands. 
So here you go. You get married. Life's great. The volleyball team's looking at spring pra- at spring uh, beach volleyball, and mm-hmm. you're excited about your recruiting class for this coming fall season. And then COVID hits, and yep. there's a lot of doubt all the way through summer. How did you, as a staff, handle it? And how did your players handle it? I think it was a little frustrating for everybody at first. I mean, we were out recruiting literally the day before. It was during spring break, and I was in Indiana recruiting and I get the text, um, you got to come home, you know, we're getting shut down. Everyone's getting shut down. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, I think there was so much uncertainty. And the only thing that as a staff and as players, we can tell them is we just got to be willing for change and be ready for anything to kind of come our way day by day. Um, but it's hard to know, like, it's hard to live life through the unknown. Um, so one step at a time, we just were acting as if we're playing right now. And I think for spring, it was hard for our girls to adjust from in-person classes to on- online, but they made it work. And, you know, that we have a great group. We only had six returners. So in the spring, we had a small little group, um, but now having a large incoming class, I think this fall is going to be a little bit different for them. I want to talk about your new class and your new look, but first of all, the Ohio Valley Conference has postponed all fall sports except for football to potentially winter or spring. So you Mm -hmm. do not know yet exactly when your conference schedule would start and whether you play just conference or non-conference, right? You're still in the dark to an extent about when do we actually play? Correct. I think they're still kind of working on bits and pieces of when the national championship would be for volleyball. All I know is it's spring. Um, I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, but we haven't gotten an official date of when our season actually starts. When I glanced at your roster, I counted five juniors, no seniors, seven freshmen, two sophomores. I don't know if that's changed or or it it has to be updated, but you're going to have a young class. But you feel, you've told me, you feel like you'll have a lot of new talent coming in. Yeah, we got eight newcomers and one's a transfer and – I think that they're going to be huge for us in this next coming season. Um, The positive side of, you know, being able to kind of work with them in the fall slowly and not have competition is really be able to get them involved in our systems, getting them able to adjust. Because you have to remember, a lot of these freshmen haven't played since March because they all got shut down in their club season. So you could see coming back into the fall practices, some of our girls were a little rusty and they needed to get back in shape. Um, So we're really taking advantage of this downtime that we have with them and really getting them into our systems that we run here. Um, But our incoming class is going to be huge for us this year. And like you said, we don't have seniors. So the the high point of it is that we're going to have the same team for the next two years, which will be nice. Obviously, uh, the game part of it's important in the physical part, but you got to think about the mental, the emotional Mm -hmm. part, and then the safety part as well. Exactly. And I think my kids are very good about um, safety is always first. And we've always preached that. Um, I think it's really hard for student athletes and college athletes or college students in general um, to really understand what's really going on in the world right now. I think there's a lot of things going on that we need to take hold of and be responsible about. And so we're just trying to stay on top of them of how, how safety is always first, making sure you're doing the right things as student athletes. Um, you represent EKU and They've been very good about it, and they understand um, what's going on and what precautions that we need to take. Well, it's good to see you. Again, we're uh, doing everything remote. I'm in the studio. Everybody yeah. else is remote, but it's good to see you, and I, I look forward to seeing the Colonels on the court at Alumni Coliseum at Brea Arena as soon as possible. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Good to see you. All right, John Bazzani, the volleyball coach at Eastern Kentucky, and that does it for the first edition this season of Inside EKU Sports. Like and follow all of the social media pages you see on your screen to keep up with EKU athletics. Until next time, so long, and as always, go Big E.